Then Paul began to share some more. Paul says that, and I was called to be an apostle unto the gospel. And that I'm going to stop. I want to talk about the apostle, but I'm going to jump in because of time. He says, I'm called to be an apostle unto the gospel of God. What I want to dwell in for the next 10, 15 minutes would be, the 10 minutes would be the teaching of the gospel of God. The reason why I said so is this. A lot of people are Christians, but do not understand what Christianity is. A lot of people are Christians, they don't understand the concept of the gospel. And once you don't understand the gospel of the gospel, you can easily be swayed to another side of the gospel. Let me show you what I mean. Will you turn your Bible to Galatians chapter 1? Galatians chapter 1, in verse 6. Galatians chapter 1, in verse 6. Galatians chapter 1, in verse 6. This is what it says. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from the gospel unto the I marvel that you are soon removed from him that's called you unto the grace of Christ unto what another gospel. So there are many gospel versions preached all over the place that's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and prevent the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Good. So what is the gospel? What is the gospel? Um, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1. What is the gospel? So Paul, Bible says Paul was separated as an apostle unto the gospel of God. Romans 1.1. 1, 1. What is the gospel? Romans, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Bible says in verse 15, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, and I preach unto you that... No, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah which I've received, wherein you stand, by which you are also saved, if you keep in memory that which I preached to you, unless you have believed in vain. Verse 3. For I've delivered unto you, first of all, that which I received, it was telling what the gospel was. What's the gospel? How Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So, what is the gospel? What is the gospel? The first thing is this. The word gospel in the Greek is, um, means good news from God. It's literally good message. So, when the Bible says the gospel, what is good about the gospel? What is good? The first good thing is this. This is the first good thing. That, number one, there's no distance between I and God. God is not angry with me. There's reconciliation between I and God. And the reason why we say that is this. Because before, there was a gap between man and God. Someone says, there was a gap. Who made the gap? It was Adam. Someone says, Adam? How can Adam do something that affects all of us? Is that not... You know, when I heard the concept, I thought that was crazy. Did you also think so initially? I said, how does Adam do something and affect all of us? The same way my, the same way my child can't be white because his parents are black. Praise the Lord. We it's black because we passed it to him. Praise God. It can be. So, this was, you must notice. Adam, Adam was not just a person. Adam was a prototype. So, because the Bible kept talking about Adam as the first Adam. In fact, I don't want to go down with maybe way too deep. So, think of Adam as a prototype. So, if you saw the prototype on an iPhone, and the iPhone had three cameras... What will happen to the other phones when they produce it? What will happen? They will also have, what, three cameras. So what happens to the prototype will happen to what? The other products. So Adam was a prototype. So whatever happens to Adam happens to the product. Someone said, that's not fair. Why did God do that to us? That one man can influence our destiny. God is very smart and more intelligent than you. The reason why he did it was because if the first Adam can be a prototype, there will also be a last Adam. Hallelujah. <laughs> there would also be what? A last Adam. Who is the last Adam? Can I hear his name? Jesus Christ. That whatever happens to Jesus can come straight to you without you doing anything for it. So, so this is very powerful. This is, this is very, 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 very powerful. Let's read two scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 18, verse, chapter 5, verse 18. So this is what the Bible says. <laughs> this is extremely powerful. He says, And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself, by Jesus Christ, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. This is why you can say we are a religion. We are not. We don't compare us to other forms of worship. There are over 4,000 religions in the world. Christianity is not a religion. You know why? 
all religions have one thing in common it is the man that is trying to please god it is the man that is trying to reconcile himself to god because the god the god or the goddess are always angry so the man is looking for how to please god christianity is the only religion or the form of worship rather pardon my english where the god is the one that is reconciling man to himself hallelujah see see what the bible says here this is very powerful the bible says and god will reconcile us in other religions you have to bring something you have to do something you have to buy something you have to push something in christianity he said god that reconciled he's the one that thought about it other religion you have to carry sacrifice to appease the god listen to me god was the one that initiated reconciliation number two god was the one that actually reconciled with himself god is the angry party but yet god is the one that provided the sacrifice what love what reckless grace what love what reckless grace see if you know how much god did to get you you will never think he will not answer your prayers ah, you don't understand ah, this is what the bible says in romans oh my god if you because bible says it reconciled us like it was not even our idea it was not an idea he didn't only have the plan of reconciliation he provided the sacrifice for reconciliation Dells, if you have this kind of boyfriend marry him when you offend him, he comes and says, I'm sorry. You're the one that offended. Just imagine you have a boyfriend. You cheated on him with his best friend. And you got pregnant in the process. And the guy comes back and says, I'm so sorry. This is a car, BMW 5 Series, to show my apology. That's what God did. That's what God did. We were the one that turned away. We were the one that cheated. We were the one that offended he was the one that came after us he was the one that brought his best and said i'm still sorry somebody said jesus listen to me this is what we call grace it's undeserving it's unmerited we, we, he didn't have to come and let me tell you something if god thinks about me that way you think you'll answer my prayers that's the problem because you don't know how important you are to God. When you did wrong, see, we didn't have to do right for him to accept us. The Bible says, while we were yet seen as Christ, commended his love towards us. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So what is the gospel? The gospel is this, that there's no more gap between us and God. Look at what the Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 11. He says this, verse 11 Ephesians 2 11 wherefore remember in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are caught on circumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made with hands that at that time you were without Christ aliens from the commonwealth of Israel strangers from the covenant of promise having no hope you didn't have hope having without God in this world what did they say it says but now in Christ Jesus, yea, who sometimes were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. We look at verse 14. He said, For he is our peace. When there was anger, he became the peace. Hallelujah. He is our peace. Who had made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition. Ah! Let me answer a simple question. Why does this seem that God in the Old Testament is different from God in the New Testament? Please come, handsome, come. Come, this is the reason why. You say, why does it seem that the God in the Old Testament is different from the God in the New Testament? This is the reason why. Because in the New Testament, there's a game changer, there's a joker card. Jesus Christ came and paid for our sins and bought the consequences of sin. So this is what happened in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, there was no Jesus that paid the consequence of sin. So this is what happened. Man, every time, watch this, every time man gets into trouble and God wants to touch man, because man gets into trouble and danger is coming. Every time man gets, and God wants to touch man, what happened? This is man, this is Satan. Satan steps in and says, you can't touch him. He's a sinner. He says, you can't touch him. He's a sinner. God says, all the weight of judgment, you can't touch him, he's a sinner. So every time, there'll be judgment. There'll be this, there'll be that. Because man was imperfect. Man's heart was wicked. But God was looking from afar, trying to touch man. But he couldn't because Satan would always say, 
you are, Satan will look at him and say, you are holy, you are righteous. He deserves it. Stay out of it. He deserves it. And because God is holy, his quality is to be just. He is righteous. He cannot deny justice. When Satan says, stay out of it, he understands what he's saying. He stays out of it. But God says, it's not belong. Because very soon, Jesus Christ will come. And the weapon that Satan used that was seen was poured on Jesus. That's why when Jesus was on the cross, God dealt with him. God dealt with him. He bled. He died. He suffered. Because all the things that man should suffer, he put on him. Why? So that when he wants to deal with man and Satan comes up, Satan says, you can't because it has been dealt with. So all of a sudden, God can show man mercy. God can show man grace. God can show man mercy. God can show man grace. Why? Because Jesus, that's what it means. That Jesus is our peace that has broken down. There was a war. He broke down. Let's read that verse again. Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 14. He is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of petition. Having abolished in his own flesh the enmity, even the law of commandment contained in ordinance. What does that mean? This is what Satan used to do. Every time God wants to do something for man, that's it. Boy, he lied. You can't do it for him. Because that's true. Because God can't touch the sinner and his sin. Satan will always bring his joker card. He says, the law of ordinance, the sin was a problem. God says, let's remove sin once and for all. So God took sin, put it on Jesus Christ, and wiped it out. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. There's something I want to read to you. Romans chapter 4 verse 6 quickly. Um, Romans chapter 4 verse 6. Handsome, can you give me your shoes please? Romans chapter 4 verse 6. This is good. The Bible says, even as David also described the blessedness of a man. Just hold it for me. The blessed of a man who God imputed righteousness without works. Verse 7. Blessed are those whose iniquity has forgotten and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man who God does not what? What does that mean? The two of them, forget the last question. Let me use somebody else. You can go, sir. Let me use somebody else. Yeah, come, come. Let, let me use somebody else. Maybe, maybe you can come, Joel. Let me use somebody else. So we don't confuse it. Please give me the shoes. Just let me hold it. They're very expensive shoes. You can tell the pastor. You, you can just go down, pastor. So the two of them came. They went for shopping. So face them. They went to shop. So when they went to shop, this guy picked the shoes, but this guy paid for it. So when they got to the counter, when you see bank statements, who would the price show on his account? Is it the guy that picked the shoe or the guy that paid for it? The word impute is to impute. So, this man, he had the sins. But when it was time to pay for his sins, he didn't have enough money to pay. This man that had credits paid for him. All of a sudden, this man go with the benefits. Not because he's a great guy. Because of what this man has done. What, what does that mean? Right now, when you sin, God says he can't pay for it because he paid for it. This is why we are forgiven. Not because God just closed his eye. No. Someone actually paid for our sin. Someone actually paid for our sin. This is why we're forgiven. Someone actually paid for our sin. So, he cannot get the shoe and go and tell the store, ah, thank you, Mr. Store Manager. I didn't pay anything. Because that's the wrong person to thank. Who should he thank? He should thank the person here that paid for it. The reason why you're forgiving is not because you're handsome. It's not because your sin is small. Someone say, well, this is what a lot of you that moral. <laughs> I didn't commit it. I'm not, I'm not in that I commit. I don't do anything. Though. All I did is small, small lie. You are still a sinner. Big, big lie. Sinner. Oh, oh, listen, all of us are sinners before God. But this is a beautiful thing. No matter how big or high your sin is, Jesus has paid not for the sin you committed, for the sin you committed, for the sins you will yet commit. So that when you sin today, it's not imputed to your account. It's written to his own account. Somebody say hallelujah. So when you see me walking up and down, it's not because I'm a great person because of Jesus Christ. And what this does is that it makes you want to live right because I don't want to be unfair to the one that loves me. If your husband loves you so much and gives you a credit card, you don't want to mess it up. Because some will say, ah, if you teach this, you will just be seen anyhow. But listen to me, only a stupid wife will your husband give you a credit card and you just be buying anything. Because very soon, credit card will be withdrawn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
Let's close. Oh, glory to God. Hey, glory to God. I said glory to God. So, what does this mean? Number one, God is no longer mad with me. Let me check that scripture where it says he freely gives. Um, Pastor Fuluke, let me check that scripture that he freely, Romans chapter, I think chapter 8. How he freely gave us a son. You know why this is important? This is why this is important. Ever look at me. Because many of you, every time something happens, sit and say, you're not good enough. Remember your sin. Remember what you have done. Remember this. Remember that. That is Satan's work. It's called the accuser of the brethren. Romans 8.32. See what the Bible says. He had no dates. He said, I will date. When you lost a virginity, I can go give you a husband. Satan is an expert. Why won't you have five blood? When you took out the baby, what do you think will happen? Well, you don't tight. Won't God send something? Satan always accuses you. Have you noticed every time you are praying seriously, next thing, the list of your sins starts showing up in your mind. Oh my God. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Why? Because Satan is trying to distract you. He wants to stop you. See what the Bible says. He that spared not his own son, but he delivered him for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us Take note of the word freely. You read, give us. I won't take note freely without conditions attached to it. Ah! When I come to pray, freely. Freely give me. Without conditions. Freely give me. When I was a younger Christian, I, I grew up in a setting where there was a lot of sin consciousness. We were so conscious of our sins. Who were never conscious of what Christ did. Who were so conscious. And guess what? The more we tried, the more we sinned. The more we tried, the more we sinned. Only that everybody was hiding their sin. And the parents are, and the children that grew up in that area looked at their parents as great hypocrites because they could tell the big disconnect. Because religion says, if you don't have it, fake it. That's what religion says. If you don't have it, what? Fake it. Jesus said, don't fake it. Come as you are. Why? I can change you and give you a new heart. Religion says, even if I'm not righteous, once you're coming to church, just wear toban and wear full dress. And meanwhile, what you did last night, my God! See, freely gives us all things. Many of you are praying for a business contract. You say, God, hey, God. See, it says, if he spared not his son, for you, personally for you, for you, if he spared not his son, the biggest thing God has is his son. Why won't he give you a wife? Why won't he give you a job? Why won't he give you a house? Why won't he give you a contract? Why won't he bless you? Why won't he restore you? If he spared not his son, you are the one that keeps thinking, hey, I'm not worth it. Have you noticed? Every time you're praying for something and it's taking one month, the next thing, God is teaching me something because of who I am. God is doing something. The reason why is that you are so conscious of your mistakes that Satan knows how to use it against you very easily. In fact, many of you don't pray because you know God. I know. If you want to, when you are ready to answer, you answer because me myself, I know God. You know, me myself, I know God. Prayer does not. You know why prayer does not excite you because you know that maybe, maybe not. But when you know that you are precious to Him, even the way you pray, you pray like a slave. God, is this how you keep on looking at me? Is this how people are going to be laughing at me? Imagine your prayer. Pray like a servant. Uh -uh, that's not how I pray. I always tell him, Father, I know you love me. You have planned for me already. House is planned for. Children planned for. Wife planned for. Job planned for. Career plans for. Money plans for. Everything planned for. I've just come to receive what you have planned for me. Somebody say Hallelujah! Why? There's no reason why you can't get pregnant. Listen, even the people that did take abortion, God gave them baby. What about you? And I say, I don't know why my own is like this. I don't know why my own is like this. See, you're already saying the wrong thing. Why, why your own? Which is your own? Your own can only get better. He says, how much more? Will he not freely give us? He says, if you can give us a son freely, give us all things. Oh my God. I said, oh my God. I said, oh my God. See, I have been forgiven. I have been forgiven. Many of you are here. 
And as we are sitting right now, just say, hmm, am I sure? Hmm. Hmm. Be careful, be careful. Because all your sins are coming up and down your eyes. Listen to me. If you are not forgiven, God is not fair. Because sin cannot be punished twice. If Jesus took, is either Jesus did not die. If he died, then you had to be forgiven. Because your sin was put on him. So, I don't have to feel forgiven. It's a fact. He's documented. He died and rose. Why? When he died, he didn't die for himself. He had no sin. He died in my place. He died in my place. And he died in my place that I might be forgiven. That's why the Bible says, when he died, we died with him. When he was raised up, we were raised up with him. When he was seated, we were seated with him. Somebody say hallelujah. That's why when I pray, I don't pray. You know, I pray like Jesus. Because Jesus took my place that I may take his place. Can you see why you're going to get engaged this year? Uh -huh. There's no reason for the hold back again. Can you see why you're going to have the baby this year? Can you see how you're going to have that contract this year? The reason why that like, if he gave me his son. You know, many of you feel very guilty. You live guilty. As you come to church, you'll be worshiping. I love you, Lord. Satan now says, on Thursday, what was your hand touching? <laughs> From that? Oh. You will just sit down. Many of you, you know why you don't come to church on Sunday? Because Saturday night, you knew what happened. Satan said, you want to go to church? You know thunder can strike you. Because, because in Satan's mind, you are a sinner. See what God said. Hebrews, this is the last scripture, chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. Are you there, somebody? Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. He says... No, no, no. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16, rather. I, I don't want to go to until I, I, I can cover that now. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16. Is it, this is the covenant that I have with them. That after those that said the Lord, I will put the laws in their hearts and in their mind. And I'll write them. See verse 17. Read. One to go. And their sin and their iniquity. What will happen? Anyone remind you of your sin is a devil. Someone says, don't we have to tell them. They will, they, will, they will take, they will, they will, you are giving them license to sin. Hey. Those that are sin right now, where do they get the license from? This is, let me tell you what it is. When I was in secondary school and I used to lie, because I knew God loved me, I used to come back. Until I got to a point, I grew over it. Those people that felt condemned, they never came back again. They stayed in the world forever. I never got over it. God says, come back. That's why it says, there's now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ. So I say, won't they continue sinning? If you know this and that's a license, maybe you were never born again. This should make you be like, it's like the man, the wife gave the credit card. It should make you so humble. Let's pray. L listen, everybody. Listen. When you pray from today, pray knowing that God has no sin against you. There's no reason why I will not answer your prayers. There's no reason why I will not bless you. There's no reason why that document will not come to pass. Because your sins were not kept. They were forgiven. It says, your sin and iniquity, I will remember no more. That's why Paul said in Romans, now therefore, there's no condemnation to them in Christ Jesus. You know why it's hard for you to forgive? Because you yourself have not received forgiveness. When you have received forgiveness, you will never struggle to forgive again. Let's pray.